And by yeah. the time the show ended, so you had at that point a tremendous, almost a decade. And so you've seen social media go from zero all mm -hmm. the way through Facebook, all the way through Twitter. And at some point that's got to activate celebrity on a whole nother level. Was it something that that you leaned into pretty heavily or was it something that you were just like, oh wow, this is a, a whole new world? No, it took me a while. I also, the timeline for us, you know, when our show hit was the heyday of the internet and print kind of gossip world. You know, the Us Weeklies and the and, and like Perez Hilton. And there was a lot of like really horrible bully culture. And you didn't, you didn't have the option to have your own voice. And every time that you kind of wound up on one of those things, it felt really invasive. It felt untrue. It, it felt like, it was really lowest common denominator, like icky vibes. And when social media kind of started, I didn't want to be any more open because that stuff was kind of painful and weird and surprising. And, and we all went through it in our own ways, but people would have a narrative they determined about you and then they would just make that the story. And for a very empathetic and sensitive and intellectual kid, that was a weird world for me. And I think, I think it always really got to me because I had studied journalism and I just thought none of this is right. Like you don't do this to people, you don't treat people this way. So when social media kind of began, I, I didn't want any part of it. And I remember thinking that the cool thing about Facebook could be that I could at least have it be private and I could share, you know, photos and life things with friends at home. But there were all these really sort of insidious things happening that none of us knew about yet where, you know, quote unquote fans would hack friends' Facebook accounts or, or do these like mirror accounts that looked exactly the same to get access to ours and then take all of our photos and then upload them to these fan sites. So, you know, like I remember there's a photo of me like giving a bath to my then boyfriend's niece, like this little girl who's naked and they were all over these fan websites. And it just felt like such an invasion of privacy because I had not obviously shared that publicly. And and so I, I really just didn't, I was like, I don't think so. Like, this is not for me. And then the thing that turned the tide was knowing that there were people, because I wasn't taking my own place in those spaces, that there were people impersonating me, often who didn't spell check. And I was always so frustrated because I thought, listen, <laughs> if you're going to impersonate... Also, if you're gonna impersonate the girl who went to journalism school on the internet, at least spell check. It's quite literally the least you can do. <laughs> um, but when Deepwater Horizon happened and, and we had the crisis of that oil spill off the Gulf Coast, I realized I could use a Twitter account as a news channel because I, I was talking to some of the environmental activists who I work with down in New Orleans and they'd been working in Gulf Shores and they just said, everything you see on the news is bullshit. They are not telling the truth about how bad this is. So I got on a plane and flew down there and started tweeting. And then was, I, I was like doing satellite video call-ins to news networks and, and doing interviews and talking about what I had seen and that I'd been threatened with arrest by the sheriffs who were trying to tell me I wasn't allowed to document, film, photograph, which is all illegal. Um, there were private security for the oil company, you know, trying to keep people out of these public spaces to document what was happening. So I realized that there was such an immense power as an activist in social media. So that's what turned it for me.